Hello everyone, my name is Steve Sandler. I am one of the behavioral health therapists here at the Villages Health. Today, I would like to talk to you about the issue of alcohol use and misuse as it relates to seniors living in the villages. For those of you who suspect that you may be drinking too much alcohol or that alcohol is causing some degree of negative consequence to your life, I hope you find this presentation to be helpful. First, just a quick word on my credentials. I am a licensed clinical social worker or LCSW who has been working in the fields of mental health and substance abuse treatment since 1992. I later earned my LCSW in 2002. I also hold a secondary credential called Certified Addictions Professional from the Florida Certification Board, which establishes a level of competency to provide counseling for people who struggle with chemical addictions. For those of you who live in the villages, the use and sometimes misuse of alcohol is commonplace. The villages is a wonderful place for seniors to enjoy their retirement, to enjoy social and recreational activities that provide their lives with fulfillment, with joy and countless friendships. Many seniors who I have spoken with describe their lives in the villages as an earned reward for many years working in their respective careers. For some, the use of alcohol is merely an occasional treat that helps them to relax and to enjoy time with their friends. However, for some seniors, alcohol is becoming or has already become a problem in their lives. Some villagers are wondering if they need to cut back on their alcohol intake in the interests of their overall health and wellness. However, some villagers may be struggling with a more serious and or long term alcohol issue that needs more active attention and perhaps even formal treatment intervention. So let's take a look at this issue of alcohol use in the villages. The Villages is a drinking community with a golf problem. This quote is from a March 2014 article published in the Villages News titled, Has Happy Hour Become a Hazard? Where the culture of alcohol use within the Villages was discussed, offering this above description. Also, it included this phrase, the generous flow of alcohol everywhere you go. Describing and acknowledging the presence of problem drinking behavior within the villages. The same villages news article also cited the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, which recommends that people over age 65 should have no more than seven drinks a week and no more than three drinks on any one day. With the manner in which happy hour drinks are sold in the villages, meaning good old two for one, drinking at happy hour locations could easily put seniors over this recommended daily intake. So for many seniors living in the villages, their use of alcohol is relatively moderate, meaning controlled and not resulting in any significant life problems. However, for some villagers, their use of alcohol may be more of a health and or situational concern. So some program objectives. We are going to be reviewing some statistics on alcohol use and misuse. We are going to be exploring what is considered too much alcohol intake for seniors. 
we're going to be reviewing the negative health consequences of excessive alcohol use for seniors. Also, we're going to be taking a look at the clinical criteria for a diagnosis called alcohol use disorder or AUD. Also talking about making that decision to either quit or to cut down on your drinking. Also um, talk, going to be talking about the option of receiving an evaluation of your alcohol issue through the Behavioral Health Department here at the Village's Health. And also identifying some uh, areas for support and treatment resources. So, some statistics. In 2016, the International Journal of Geriatric Psychiatry published a multidisciplinary study conducted by researchers from the University of South Florida titled Drinking Behavior Among Older Adults in a Planned Retirement Community. Results from the Villages Survey. These researchers surveyed 11,100 villagers residents and the researchers found that hazardous drinking was reported in 15.4 percent of the respondents which is somewhat higher than the general population of older adults where drinking is around 10 percent of the population so what this research finding shows is that if it feels like a lot of people in the villages are drinking heavily or in a hazardous manner um, this research is supporting that observation so is my drinking becoming a problem although the use of alcohol in the villages is very common you may be wondering if you are drinking too much. So have any of the following people expressed concern about your drinking, such as your spouse, your doctor, your family, friends, or maybe even from yourself? So let's take a look at some of the negative health consequences of alcohol abuse among senior citizens, which are extensive. Alcohol abuse among seniors can cause liver damage, immune system disorders, brain damage. Excessive alcohol use can also worsen such health conditions as osteoporosis, high blood pressure, or ulcers. Also, people who misuse alcohol may also have problems managing conditions such as diabetes, pain, and sleep disorders. Excessive alcohol use can also increase the risk of cancers of the oral cavity, esophagus, larynx, pharynx, liver, colon, and rectum. And also excessive alcohol use can cause forgetfulness and confusion that may be mistaken for Alzheimer's disease. So how much is too much alcohol? Well, first let's start with by talking about what is considered a standard drink. So in the United States, a standard drink, also known as the alcohol drink equivalent, is defined as any beverage containing 0.6 fluid ounces or 14 grams of pure alcohol. Although the drinks pictured here are different sizes, each contains approximately the same amount of alcohol and counts as one US standard drink or one alcoholic drink equivalent. So basically, 12 ounces of beer equals eight to nine fluid ounces of malt liquor equals five fluid ounces of wine and equals 1.5 fluid ounces of uh, a shot of hard liquor. So all of these are equivalent to one standard drink. 
So again, how much is too much? Well, low risk drinking is not no risk drinking. Even within recommended limits, drinkers can have problems if they drink too quickly, have health problems, or are older. And although I've highlighted this information earlier, I'm going to repeat it here. According to the National Institute of Health, both men and women over age 65 are generally advised to have no more than three drinks on any one day and no more than seven drinks during the course of one week. But based on your health and how alcohol affects you, you may need to drink less or not at all. Now, what is considered alcohol misuse? Well, alcohol misuse, which includes binge drinking and heavy drinking, increases your risk of harmful consequences, including being diagnosed with alcohol use disorder or AUD. The more drinks on any day and the more alcohol misuse over time, the greater the risk. The National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, also called NIA, defines binge drinking as a pattern of drinking alcohol that brings blood alcohol concentration to 0.08% or 0.08 grams of alcohol per deciliter or higher. What that means is for a typical adult, this pattern corresponds to consuming five or more drinks if you're male or four or more drinks if you're female on any given day. Some more information from uh, the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. According to a 2017 NIA analysis, alcohol use has steadily increased in the population aged 60 and above over the past two decades, particularly among women. Approximately 20% of adults aged 60 to 64 and around 11% over age 65 reported current binge drinking. And as I stated earlier, binge drinking is defined as five or more servings of alcohol in one use episode for men, four or more uh, servings of alcohol for women in one episode. Also, according to Naya, aging can lower the body's tolerance for alcohol. Older adults generally experience the effects of alcohol more quickly than when they were younger. This puts older adults at higher risks for falls, car crashes, and other unintentional injuries that may result from drinking. Additionally, many prescription and over-the-counter medications as well as herbal remedies can be dangerous or even deadly when mixed with alcohol. So now let's take a look at what are considered the symptoms of alcohol use disorder or AUD. So di doctors diagnose AUD when a patient has two or more of the following 11 symptoms listed on the following two pages. Two or more of these 11 symptoms. The AUD diagnosis is considered mild when there's a presence of two or three of these symptoms. It's considered moderate when there's a presence of four or five of these symptoms. And in the severe category, when there's a presence of six or more. So let's take a look at these 11 symptoms one at a time. In the past one year, have you, number one, had times when you ended up drinking more or longer than you had intended. Two, 
more than once wanted to cut down or stop drinking or tried to, but couldn't. Three, spent a lot of time drinking, being sick from drinking, or getting over other after effects. Four, wanted a drink so badly you couldn't think of anything else. Five, found that drinking or being sick from drinking often interfered with taking care of your home or family or caused job troubles or school problems. Six, continued to drink even though it was causing trouble with your family or your friends. Seven, have you given up or cut back on activities that were important or interesting to you or had given you pleasure in order to drink? Eight, more than once gotten into situations while or after drinking that increased your chances of getting hurt, such as driving, swimming, using machinery, walking in a dangerous area, or engaging in unsafe sexual behavior. Nine, continue to drink even though it was making you feel depressed or anxious, or adding to other health problems, or after having an alcohol-related memory blackout. 10, had to drink more, much more than you once did to get the, same, the effect you want, or found that your usual number of drinks had much less effect than before. And 11, have you found that when the effects of alcohol were wearing off, you had withdrawal symptoms, such as trouble sleeping, shakiness, restlessness, nausea, sweating, a racing heart, dysphoria, also called feeling uneasy or unhappy, malaise, a general sense of being unwell, feeling low, or even had a seizure, or had you perhaps even sensed things were not there. So again, having at least two of these 11 symptoms could result in a diagnosis of alcohol use disorder. AUD is considered mild when there's a presence of two or three of these symptoms, considered moderate, presence of four or five symptoms, and in the severe category, when there's a presence of six or more of these symptoms. Now, let's take a look at the decision to either cut down or to quit use of alcohol. So if you are considering changing your drinking, you'll need to decide whether to cut down or to quit. It's a good idea to discuss different options with a healthcare professional, with a friend, or with someone else that you trust. Guidance on cutting down on drinking called Making a Change Plan is included in the NIA publication called Rethinking Drinking, which will be discussed at the conclusion of this presentation. And please note that when somebody who has been drinking heavily for a prolonged period of time suddenly stops drinking, the body can go into painful or even potentially life-threatening process of withdrawal. Symptoms of withdrawal, as we discussed just a moment ago, can include nausea, rapid heart rate, seizure activity, or any other number of problems. So it is a good idea to seek medical help to plan a safe recovery. Inpatient detoxification treatment may be necessary. Doctors can prescribe medications to address these symptoms and make the process safer and less distressing for you. However, quitting drinking is strongly advised if you have tried cutting down your alcohol use in the past, but could not stay within the limits that you had set for yourself. Also, quitting is recommended if you've been formally diagnosed with AUD in the past or now have active symptoms. 
Also quitting is recommended if you have physical or mental health conditions that may cause or being worsened by your drinking. Also quitting is recommended if you are taking a medication that interacts specifically with alcohol. If none of the conditions above apply to you, then it's a good idea to talk to your doctor to determine whether you should cut down or quit based on factors such as a family history of alcohol problems, your current age, or a history of drinking related injuries, or symptoms such as sleep, chronic pain, depression or anxiety disorders, or any sexual dysfunction. And you can also consult with a qualified professional, such as myself. If you are struggling with an alcohol issue, consider meeting with a qualified mental health or substance abuse professional to discuss how you can get help and support. Referrals to structured treatment programs in the local community are also available if recommended. If you are a patient of the village's health, simply ask your primary care provider for a referral to the Behavioral Health Department at TVH for you to attend a clinical evaluation of your alcohol issue. A clinical evaluation can provide you with professional feedback about the patterns of your alcohol use, as well as provide you with support and or treatment recommendations. But if you are not a member of the Village's Health, mental health and substance abuse treatment providers are available in your local community. You may contact your health insurance provider for affiliated referrals or consult your local community mental health center or contact the TVH Behavioral Health Department support staff for assistance. I would also just like to take a moment to share with you some information about helpful mutual aid support groups and related helpful websites uh, regarding alcohol uh, abuse or misuse or very popular support groups that are available online or sometimes face to face. Alcoholics Anonymous or AA. Secular Organizations for Sobriety also called SOS, the Smart Recovery Program, or Women for Sobriety. And each of their websites are listed here. Other related uh, helpful websites include um, the National Institute for Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism for more information about alcohol use disorder, and uh, treatment options, as well as the federal government's substance abuse treatment facility locator, uh, which is provided through the Department of Health, a division specifically called SAMHSA, which stands for the Substance Abuse Mental Health Service Administration. And that uh, website is listed for you here. And as I stated earlier, Rethinking Drinking, available for download off the internet. Uh, for more information regarding alcohol and your health, you can download the free 22 page booklet called Rethinking Drinking, published by the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. Included are suggestions of how to create a change plan to help you cut down on your drinking, as well as resources for formal treatment options and sober support groups to get help to stop drinking. The website is listed for you here, or you can very easily just Google rethinking drinking and the PDF will come up for you to download or to print out. So I'd like to just thank you for your attention to this presentation. I hope that you found it to be helpful. Please remember controlling and or stopping your use of alcohol is good 
for your overall health and wellness. If you have any questions about this topic, please discuss them with your primary care provider. As a patient of the village's health, your doctor can refer you to the TBH Behavioral Health Department for guidance, support, community resource referrals, or to attend a clinical evaluation of your alcohol issue with me. So thank you once again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.